Some people have invested in certain things and they stand behind them and I'm okay with that. But um, when you ask yourself simple things, like simple truths, a lot of the answers come shining through like a shining star. So it's very important you always ask those simple truths and I call them unshakable truths. One of my favorite is when you look at the Big Dipper today, it was the same Big Dipper you saw 30 years ago. Those stars aren't moving. They're staying there. That's a truth. You can go out in nature and you can see that. So one of the questions I ask, because people say alkaline, acid, alkaline, and so it's a big confusing situation you have in the water industry today. So the first thing I ask a person is I say, when you go into nature, if you see water killing plants and animals, would you drink it? Well, did you know distilled in RO water kill plants and, and fish? Did you know alkaline water kills plants and fish? In fact, alkaline water will kill plants in three days. Start giving it to your plants at home and watch them go yellow. Distilled in RO water, same thing. There's nothing in there. The plants can't uptake. The number one thing added in the California soils and in the world for agriculture, sulfuric acid. Anybody know why? Anybody know why they use sulfuric acid in the soils? pH. Why, why does the soil need to be acid? To break down the minerals. Minerals cannot be dissolved in alkaline. It's impossible. Salt isn't created from alkalinity. It's created from an acid volcanic process. Just like our stomach is acid. Our digestive juices are acid, not alkaline. The point of absorption for, for digestion doesn't start with alkalinity. In fact, where's alkaline used in the body? Anybody know? Where's the main place? The high alkaline. What, what does high alkaline do? Anybody know what liquid plumber is? Oxygenates. No. <laughs> Dissolves. It emulsifies. It emulsifies fats. So your, uh, well, it's the bile. The bile produces like a 12 plus pH. So it's to break down all the fats and oils that you're putting in your body. So if your bile is already producing this high pH, what more, why would you need? Does anybody know what alkalining your body means? Anybody know that? What does it mean? What does alkalining your body mean? Because... Well, they try to tell you that it means you're going to be cancer-free. Okay, that's one thing they try to tell you it means. 12-7 on the pH scale, that's it. But where? I mean, your body, your whole body? Your saliva. Your saliva? Your blood? Okay, does anybody know here uh, that if your blood drops or raises just 0.1, you're dead? You're instantly dead. So pH is not the answer. If it was pH, you'd see people just walking down the street, just dropping like flies. So what, anybody know the pH of the skin, your largest organ? F just over five. The stomach is around a two, gastric acid is a one, and your blood is just slightly alkaline, and there's actually been controversy in the scientific world whether or not alkaline starts at 7 or 7.6. So if, if alkaline really started at 7.6, we'd be pretty acidic, acidic beings. So now let's go to another one. What's, what's the number one ingredient in the universe? Anybody know that answer? Hydrogen. What is hydrogen? Anybody know what hydrogen is? Acid. What's the sun made of? 60 plus percent hydrogen. A little bit, 30 percent helium and a little bit of other stuff. Helium's the neutral. So the sun is acid. If your body does not have acid, you are dead. You are pronounced dead. No living being, no bioelectric organism can live without acid. It's impossible. It's like saying living beings, uh, you can charge a battery with a negative only, hook the positive on the side. You can't do that because you need a positive charge to charge things. That's how life works. Life is life force. It's positive energy. It's all acid. So when you break it down, really, when your body starts ramping up acid, it's because you're deficient. You can't, you're, you're trying to dissolve your own minerals. You're taking from yourself. When the body doesn't get what it needs, it finds a way to get what it needs. That's why when people don't eat, what do they do? They starve. They become emaciated. They, they self-cannibalize. Your body's going to find what it needs until it dies. What is cancer? Anybody know what cancer is? It's your defense mechanism. Everybody has cancer here. If you didn't have cancer, more than likely you wouldn't have an immune system. What does cancer do? Anybody know what cancer does? Sections off bad cells in the body. It localizes your toxins. 
It keeps your toxins localized so it's not spreading all over your body. It's what you call a tumor. So when they're telling you, oh, well, the cancer is bad, no. It's the same thing when you see red algae in uh, Florida. They have these red algae blooms. They're like, oh, the algae's gonna kill you. It's not the algae. Algae's a symptom. It's telling you something's wrong. So more often than not, what happens is people become highly nourished with no minerals. So you ever see those guys walking around where they're not fat, but they got this huge basketball in their gut, just meat or whatever. But then also you don't see what's going on when you have a raw food person who's pretty skinny and they look, look healthy. Well, when I went to the Raw Spirit Festival two years ago, I was astonished. Almost every single person had candida. Why? Anybody know why they had candida? Sugar? Sugar? Anybody else? <laughs> no, what, what happens is you become overnourished. When you're overnourished, now the, the body's not absorbing the nutrition. The yeast comes in from your digestive system to eat it. And it overtakes your body. Now, you, what do you have? What's left over after the candida comes in and eats all the stuff? What's left over? Anybody knows? Uh, I'm sorry, back up. I'm sorry, let's, let's the question what, What's left over after the candida eats all the, all the uh, excess nutrition in excrement. your... Excrement. Excrement. What is that excrement composed of? Uh, carbon. Carbon. Carbon waste. Now, does anybody know what happens in water in nature when the carbon levels are too high, when the carbon waste gets too high? The fish start dying. The oxygen demand goes way up. You have no oxygen. You're starving. What's your number one food? Anybody know your number one and number two food? Sugar. Oxygen. What's your other one? Hydrogen. The two main fuels of the universe. Nutrition is for repairing, restoring, and healing. Your energy comes from oxygen and hydrogen. So people who wake up and eat food, that's why you're feeling sleepy at noon. Because instead, you should have fueled your body with some oxygen and hydrogen. Does anybody know what it takes to get oxygen and hydrogen in the form of water into the cells? What do you have to have? Minerals? Minerals. Nah. What form? Ionic. We talked about that earlier, right? Salt. That's what ionic means. Ionic means salt. If you look up the definition of ionic in the dictionary, it'll say more, more, more often than not in the form of salt. Does anybody know what colloidal means? Size of, uh, size. Suspended particles, so they're not dissolved. They cannot pass through cell membranes. So you can't, your body can't absorb them. So they told us you know, many times in books, you've know, you got to rely on the plants to get the minerals. Well, plants are a great source, but what is it about plants that make the minerals so absorbable? Why do, why do we want them from the plants? Food source? Because of the state that the minerals turn, the, the state that plants turn the minerals into. Plants use acid at the roots to dissolve minerals into salts. So now you have ionic minerals, okay? The carbon, which means organic, really has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with that function in nature where acid is what's dissolving the minerals to uptake. Look at the ocean. You want a perfect example? What is the ocean composed mainly of? Water and salt. And it's the biggest force of life force we have on this entire planet. It's nothing but salt and water. Without that, can those, can those uh, species live? No. Can you put fish in an aquarium without salt? No. Does anybody... What's that? You still need salt. You have to have a salt. That's right. <laughs> you need a mineral, a, a, a trace mineral salt. Now, anybody ever hear of potash? Potash, right? Why is potash uh, the most prevalent uh, mineral in soil? And why is it so? Everybody's like, oh, well, that's why it's alkaline, because there's potash there. First of all, potassium is the most dissolvable mineral. It dissolves really fast. So whenever they would do their crops and burn them or whatever, whatever was left was mostly potassium. So when they feed the soils back, so they'd have to add some sort of acids unless the soil was already balanced to get those soils to reactivate and grow again. That comes from mica, the potassium. That's the first thing that's released when nature's releasing this stuff into the oceans, into the springs. 
It also has the same calcium, magnesium, and sodium levels as the ocean and our blood. That's why our blood matches the ocean. We match the ocean when it comes to our blood. So I'm trying to get people to understand these things so they can see the simple truths in nature and say, oh, well, this is what I need because this is what nature's showing me I need. I want to mix one more thing with that. Our, bloods are our blood cells are negatively charged. Uh, all the minerals in mica are known as oxides, which means they contain negative charges. They use currently in the world today, it's, one of the, it's the most used mineral on the planet, and it has been. We don't even know how long it hasn't been the most used mineral on the planet. It's used in cow feed, uh, organic farms. Any ever, anybody ever heard of vermiculite? Vermiculite's that little puffed up, squeezy mineral. That's, that's mica. They exfoliate it and it pops up like popcorn because you can't dissolve it. You can only pop it up. And then they put it in all the organic soils around here to, to hold water and trace minerals. So the, 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 the ability of this stone has already been exposed. It's just we don't understand where it's missing in our food and our water and how it actually relates to the ocean and the springs and all the other things in nature that desperately need the minerals that are contained within that cage. But in the, in the sulfate springs, you have the sulfate minerals. Because why? What's so important about this sulfate? Anybody know why we need this sulfate? Our cells burn a third energy as sulfur. In the center of the mitochondria, you have ferric iron and sulfur fatty acids. In order, it's like the match. Your cell is but a candle and only has slow lifespan. It just goes and goes and it burns. And as soon as it's gone, it's gone. Burns up. That sulfur is the, the, the key to striking up the match. And that's why a lot of people have tried these sulfur-based products, like uh, I think it's MSM and stuff like that. They've had a lot of results, but then you have the, all the trace minerals that you need along with it. Because in nature, when you're getting the sulfates, they're always with minerals. You have a complete matrix, and the matrix cannot go out of whack, and as soon as you do, you have a deficiency. When that deficiency occurs, you can see a symptom. The symptom's always based on deficiency. They say the two main problems Deficiency, toxicity. Well, guess what? Minerals handle both of those. So what's happening actually, just like with the sodium fluoride, the minerals that are within this matrix are actually absorbing whatever's out there and putting them in the matrix. Just like fulvic acid does. In fact, fulvic acid is the stuff you're seeing, uh, where's the sample? The stuff you see sink out over time so if you could imagine these aquifers spitting out all these sulfates, minerals, and then what do you have in water? Uh, fish poop, uh, dead animals. Uh, how does the water stay fresh? So these sulfates are now going in, precipitating the organic rotten waste, reducing the oxygen demand so that the fish can breathe, because now you have fish dying everywhere. Oh, oxygen demand's too high. And then, and then that stuff that sinks out to the bottom, what does it become? Your fulvic acid. What is fulvic acid mainly composed of? The main element for fulvic acid, anybody know? Iron, ferric iron, ferric iron. What does that ferric iron do in the fulvic acid? Converts bad iron into good iron, converts bad elements into good elements. I'm not anti-fulvic acid because it's a part of the process. I'm not gonna say that it's not necessary. Well, if you're vegan, I strongly recommend staying away from fulvic acid. Uh, if you're raw, because it's animal and or plant matter. It could be human stuff. I mean, you just don't know what it is. So it's, it's, there are some people that say they have uh, plant-based fulvic acid, but be careful, make sure you know where it comes from. Say, does it come from a mine? Because if it comes from a mine, they can't guarantee you that's just plant. And the definition of fulvic acid is animal and or plant matter. A lot of people are like, well, where do you get your protein? We produce more protein than we need. But can you use it? That's the question. The minerals have the ability to activate that. The, the, the enzyme is like the female. And the mineral is the male. When you complete the circuit, magical things happen inside you. It begins with your digestion. 
When you get your digestive juices back, your flora, your, your ability to absorb nutrition, you see people go from, oh my gosh, I, uh, I didn't lose any weight, but my belt went two notches. Because they're hydrating, so they're not losing weight, but all their nutrition's being eating, so their gut's shrinking it. Women go, oh my gosh, I don't bloat anymore. Because their, bo their water, body's not retaining water. It's going into the, and out of the cells perfectly fine. So the idea is, if you activate your own enzymes and you have the ability to move nutrition in, take toxins out, almost every single one of our complications just, and it's our own body doing it. These minerals are just little ions floating around. Your body communicates and says, oh, that's what I need over here, that's what I need. We're a big computer system telling everything what to do. But when you're clogged up, you don't have the tools needed to get the, system, the energy, the uh, information from here to here. Micah, M-I-C-A. Go to sciencedaily.com and just type Micah.